Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. Today, we're delving into a vital tool in genetic research and medical diagnostics, PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. This technique has absolutely revolutionized how we amplify and analyze DNA, making it an essential topic for your MCAT prep. Stick around to the end for some typical MCAT questions on PCR that'll test your understanding and see if you're prepared for test day. So, Let's get started. First, what is PCR and what does it do? Well, beyond being a marvel of biotech, allowing scientists to take a minute amount of DNA and amplify it millions of times further for study, it starts with a small sample of genomic DNA data, and within a few hours produces billions of copies of a specific DNA segment. This makes it an invaluable tool for everything from basic research to forensic analysis and disease diagnostics. The process relies on thermostable DNA polymerase, TAC polymerase, which remains active at high temperatures, and primers. DNA primers are designed to target DNA regions, guiding the amplification accurately and efficiently. We don't want to amplify the entire genome, just a small segment, and that's what the primer does. If we see our template here, where we've got two separate strains of DNA bound, we add some heat to that, and then the primers will stick on, or anneal is the fancy word. Once our primers have annealed, they will then we'll put some more heat on them, and they'll start to extend. We see the extension here. Once they've extended, You'll notice we now have doubled our amount of DNA that we started with. This is a very, very powerful tool. So what is the PCR cycle? Well, it has three main steps. The first is denaturation. This is where we're going to take our double-stranded DNA and we need to break it up. So we're going to heat it up really, really high, high. Then in step two, we're going to anneal. This is where we're taking our primers and we're sticking them on the DNA. Step three, it's extension time. So this is when we're going to take those primers and make and using TAC polymerase, extend them to amplify a section of the DNA. This cycle will be repeated many, many, many times, doubling the amount of DNA each round. Understanding these steps is crucial for grasping how PCR can quickly amplify DNA, a detail that is often emphasized in MCAT questions. Seriously, figuring this out will save you at least three points on the bio section. But why do we care? What's the impact here? And understanding the impact isn't just you know, it's not just for fun. A lot of MCAT questions are going to contextualize it in how PCR is often used. So do pay attention because you're likely to see a long form passage on the impact of PCR. It has a lot of applications in healthcare. It's often used for diagnosing diseases by identifying genetic mutations and even in different personalized medicine approaches. From a research perspective, PCR is fundamental for gene cloning, right? Because you could just take that gene amplified a billion times. Also important for sequencing and analysis. For the MCAT, appreciating both the technique and its practical implications is crucial for doing well on those long form passages. Now let's do a practice problem. Imagine you're conducting a PCR on a segment of DNA, but after several cycles, you notice minimal amplification. What could be potential issues? Consider factors like primer design, tac polymerase functionality, and thermal cycling conditions. Well, any of these could be the problem, right? Which would lead to poor amplification. So how can we confirm this? Well, we'll wanna do the following steps. First, you wanna do gel electrophoresis. This is where we're gonna load the DNA into a gel and see how far it moves. This will tell us how big it is. Next, we wanna sequence the DNA just so we know exactly what it is. We might wanna do this using, then we might wanna do real-time PCR to make sure that we are amplifying what we think we're amplifying. Finally, doing a restriction digest is another great way to prove that you have what you think you have. Each of these methods is really gonna just provide you a different level of confirmation. In practice, a combination of these methods would be used to ensure a PCR product is what it is. We cover these essential techniques in a separate video that I highly, highly recommend watching as it is frequently tested on the MCAT. As we wrap up here, remember that the PCR is more than just a test tube reaction. It's a gateway to understanding the very blueprint of life. Mastering this topic not only prepares you for the MCAT, also for your future in medicine or research where PCR and DNA technology are incredibly important. Thank you so much for watching our video on PCR and I will see you next time.